am now completely bankrupt. But boy, was it worth it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend and host, Zorkatone, aka The Other Apprentice here, and welcome to another haul video! Ha <laughs> ha! For those of you who may not know, my day was fairly recently, hence as to why there was no video last week. And uh, in addition to that, I thought I might do some extra hard work to gain some extra cash in order to rake in the spoils and do some early Christmas slash belated day shopping. And as you can see, I've got quite a collection going on here. And while I don't want to seem like I'm showing off in any way, shape, or form, I would like to show you guys what I got just in case you guys are looking for anything to add to your holiday wish list. Hmm? So, why don't we get this gorgeous jumbo Christmas bag out of the way and get started with what I got. The first thing I'd like to show you are these darling plushies. Now, uh, here we have Tramp from Lady and the Tramp, and while it does seem odd to get him without getting Lady, uh, they were sadly sold out of Lady, so I thought seeing how I have an old Lady plush that I bought from the thrift store that I'd give her a Tramp, and so now we are just about ready to have them share a very romantic evening and sing Bella Note. Isn't that just, isn't that just so cute? Uh, moving on, we have Copper from The Fox and the Hound. Now, this surprised me because we don't ever get any merchandise from this under-the-radar beloved classic, and I am so glad that we are actually getting some merchandise for these. Now, there was a Todd that goes along with this, but sadly the store that I went to was also sold out of him as well. So I'm hoping to go back sometime soon and to uh, get this little guy's best of friends because it's just, it's, it's, it's so cute, so cute. Next we have this adorable little patch plush. And I just noticed that most of my plush purchases were pups. <laughs> Try saying that three times fast. But I figured seeing how I don't have that much merchandise for 101 Dalmatians that I'd pick this little guy up. After all, if I got one of him, I could get another one for a discounted price. And that's exactly what I did. Here we have the Animator's Collection version of Scrump. I've always wanted a Scrump. I don't know why I don't have one by now, but I do. So, um, this is adorable. I love the buttons and the stitching and everything here. It's just, it's so cute and it's, I understand that it's a lot smaller than Scrump would be, but it goes along nicely with the Lilo plush that I have. So that's another one for my Lilo and Stitch collection. Next, we have some lovely t-shirts. And I just thought that this t-shirt right here, this whole Nightmare Before Christmas, ugly Christmas sweater, is the most adorable thing that I have seen on the shelves in a long time. So I just had to get that with Santa Claus Jack on it, as well as its companion of Zero on the red one. Seriously, this is too cute. I only kind of wish that this was like a real ugly Christmas sweater, just because I need more ugly Christmas sweaters for my collection. Would you believe it started snowing already? It's the middle of autumn. What is it? Winter isn't coming. It's here. Anyway, the final t-shirt that I got that wasn't meant for any of my nieces or nephews was this Alice t-shirt, which is not for me, but for someone very special. So it says Dreamer on it, and I'm hoping that the person I got this for will like it, because I know I certainly do, and were I able to wear it, I certainly would, but purple's not really my color. Now, these next treasures, I don't really want to waste too much time on, because A, this video is probably going to be long enough as it is, and B, they're going to have their own video to be uploaded right after this one, but may I introduce the Disney Infinity-inspired Toy Box Action Figure Series. Now, to give you a quick rundown, a toy company took the art style and the designs from the now unfortunately defunct Disney Infinity game and turned them into actual articulate action figures. And boy am I glad that they did. As soon as I found out about these, I knew I just had to pick them up. Really quickly, we have nine of them here. First off, with the Pixar ones, we have Woody, Buzz Lightyear, and Jessie the Yodelin Cowgirl and they look fantastic. Over on the Marvel side of things, we have Iron Man in his Spider-Man Homecoming suit, the Incredible Hulk, 
looking very big and he's very heavy. And finally, the Lord, I mean God of Thunder, Thor, who looks noticeably different than his Infinity counterpart, but we'll get to that in the actual video. These three figures, well, actually, it was supposed to be four, seeing how Spider-Man was supposed to be released, but, um, he's kind of hanging by a thread right now as to whether or not he can actually be sold, which is unfortunate, but hopefully uh, they will get all that sorted out and we can uh, add Peter Parker to this collection fairly soon. Finally, on the Star Wars side of things, we have Kylo Ren, you mean, naughty, meanie, along with Rey in the Force Awakens attire, and finally, a First Order Stormtrooper. These look really cool. Now, if my sources are to be believed, and normally they are, we are slated to get 10 more figures. I wouldn't be able to tell you from what franchises or what properties, but between you and me, it would be kind of nice if we got some what would have been labeled the Disney original characters. So, like the ones that we were promised but never got, i.e. Peter Pan, Moana, Maui, etc, etc. So, 10 more figures to come, 11 if you're including Spider-Man, if he gets released, but overall, I'm just very glad that I was able to get these because if you weren't able to get any of the figures from the actual game itself, I would say that you definitely gotta pick these up because it does my heart good to see that the art style is living on in other forms of media, and it's a great substitution, and they look really great too. So um, be sure to keep an eye out for when I actually do a hands-on review of these figures, because I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get them out of the box. Moving on. I'm not really one to collect Funko Pops, at least not as much as I would like to, but since it's very unusual for me to see Funko Pops being sold at the Disney store, I thought I'd pick up the ones that I saw, and those were Mary Poppins and Mickey Mouse, two very classic characters that are very dear to my heart, and you could probably tell seeing how I have them hanging up on my wall. I love these two, and I'm hoping to get more? But uh, that may not be for a while, seeing how, as I mentioned, I am flat broke. But I am very happy to add this piece of Mary Poppins merchandise to my collection. Honestly, there needs to be more Mary Poppins merchandise, am I right? And now, ladies and gentlemen, the pièce de résistance of this entire hall, and what makes up the majority of the entire hall itself. The newest additions to my ever-growing ornament collection. I love Christmas. I love Christmas. It's my favorite holiday. It's one of my favorite times of year. And I love collecting anything that might help me celebrate it with a little added bit of Disney magic. Usually, I'm so torn as to whether or not I should get them from Hallmark or the Disney store or both. But I was originally going to get eight of my favorites from the Disney store. But as you can see, I ended up buying a lot more than that. So. Sorry, Hallmark, but you're gonna have to wait, even though there are some really good ones this year. <laughs> Regardless, though, I am very happy with what I bought, and soon you shall see why. Starting off this long list is Miguel from the new Disney Pixar film, Coco. Now, he appears to be sitting on these wooden crates and strumming the guitar once belonging to the famous Ernesto de la Cruz, and he does sing... It's a little bit of a long one, but but still no less cute, and the details are really great, especially on the guitar, and I really love the merchandise that is coming out for Coco. I have a feeling that I'm really, really going to love that film. Next up, we have Bernard and Bianca from The Rescuers. Now, originally, I had been hunting like mad to find an old ornament of Bernard and Bianca holding on to the Devil's Eye Diamond. And while that sadly has yet to make a reappearance this year, the one that they have for this year is not too bad either because it's Rescuers merchandise. We need more of that too, so I'm, I'm gonna get it. And we have Bernard and Miss Bianca in Elite Boat and it looks really great. There's this sort of fiberglassy water beneath it and the, it just looks gorgeous. It's so, it's so cute. I love it. I love it. Just in time for the 80th anniversary of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, we have 
Grumpy playing the organ. Strip from the scene where the dwarfs are singing their silly song for Snow White, and Bashful just can't seem to get that verse out. So uh, this looks really great. Everything from the wood carvings to the keys to Grumpy's bitter expression. Yeah! And um, this is definitely going to go right next to the one that I have of Dopey creeping up the stairs with the candle in hand. It's just, it's really great. Oh boy, I really wish I could get my hands on more Snow White merchandise, especially for the anniversary. It's my favorite movie. Next, we have the lovely Elena of Avalor, who sings My Time. Where's the button? I love Elena of Avalor. This looks fantastic. The movement captured in the, uh, I want to say figure, but ornament, uh, and the, the sparkles on her dress, the details on the dress and on the stage itself, and the guitar and her face, it looks really, really gorgeous. And I'm just so happy that Elena of Avalor is getting more recognition. Although, I'm kind of tempted to have uh, Elena and Miguel sitting next to each other on the tree just because I love the whole guitar theme that's going on here. So, um, we shall see what happens. Next up, we have the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland, and ooh, somebody's been painting the roses red. Somebody's head's gonna roll for this. I really love the detail that went into the sculpt of the actual rose tree itself, the dripping paint, and of course, the queen. You can't forget the queen, and the, the little bit of paint that's dripping off of her fan here, and just, just the way that she's standing, just with that, just, I, I love that expression, I love her stance, and I love this ornament. Fresh from the Jungle Book, we have King Louie holding up a shambled piece of what used to be his jungle ruin palace. Uh, the sculpt on the fur is really great, the detail is really nice, the stone looks great, and the material feels different. Not as heavy and not as easily breakable as something compared to, say, the Queen of Hearts. I kind of wish that they would make more of the ornaments with this material because it doesn't feel as fragile, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be horse playing around with it anytime soon. But still, I love the Jungle Book. It's one of my mom's favorite too, and this is going to make a great addition to the tree. Going into a bit of an intergalactic territory now, we have Buzz Lightyear in the Pizza Planet Claw Game, surrounded by tons of little green men. And I really gotta say, the detail in this one is very, very nice. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, considering I am quite far away, but just look at all the little aliens in there, and the sculpt on Buzz, and the claw, of course. It looks really great. And again, the material that it's made of doesn't seem to be as heavy or as... It doesn't feel as fragile as some of the other ones. I'm wondering if they're slowly starting to change gears as to uh, what they make their ornaments out of. And if that's the case, then I would gladly welcome a change where they are less than likely to break. Next up, we have this adorable ornament that captures the perfect moments in time of Mickey and Minnie in the classic short, Hawaiian Holiday. And again, the movement that's captured in the characters here, especially in Minnie when she's doing the hula dance there, and just uh, the way that Mickey has his hands on the ukulele is, it looks right out of the, of the old short, and uh, it's one of my favorite shorts too, so uh, I'm delighted to be able to hang this on my tree this Christmas. Next up, we have The Beast, from the classic version of Beauty and the Beast, sitting in the bathtub looking so, so... Stupid. Not quite the word I would use, but he looks adorable with all the little curls and the bows and the bathtub and everything. I'm so sorry. It, it really looks great. This is probably one of my favorite ornaments from this entire set. I just... The, the, the details on the bathtub and the bubbles and his fur, especially, it looks really great. <laughs> I gotta say, if you are a fan of Beauty and the Beast, definitely pick this up because this is a must have for my collection. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry, I don't mean to laugh. Oh, uh, this, this just 
perfect, the perfect Christmas ornament right there. Oh boy, excuse me. Next up we have Maleficent. And that thing says Merry Christmas like the mistress of all evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love the details that you can see in the clothing here, especially uh, the creases on her sleeves and the orb here looks really nice. And the fire all around is a really nice touch. I think, I'm pretty sure, but I think there was an ornament, not this year, but some other time, of Maleficent as a dragon. And I don't know, I'd, I'd really like to get my hands on that one, but, but this one is, is a pretty nice one too. And that's saying a lot considering she's, you know, the most evil Disney villain ever. You know, I, I, I know it sounds weird, but I, I actually want to have as many villains on the tree as possible just because if you've ever seen Snowden at the House of Mouse and you know that little moment at the very ending song where Hades, Captain Hook, and Jafar are just all jamming out to the, the, the final number there. This, I, I don't know, it's, it's just, I guess it's kind of nice to know that, that Christmas can even bring out the best side in some of the most dastardly villains. And I know there was an Oogie Boogie ornament that is for sale this year, but I just, I'm guessing that was sold out too, so... If I'm lucky, I might be able to find it later, but I gotta be honest, I'm not really holding my breath to find it. Especially when I have so many wonderful uh, other ones this year. Uh, on that note, moving on, we have Cricky from Mulan in Grandmother Fa's little cage here, and he looks just... Treasures. I gotta tell you, I am really tempted to walk across the street with my hands over my eyes and just to see if I'm able to make it in one piece. Kids don't actually do that. I beg you, do not actually do that. Shame on me for putting that idea in your head. Kids, do not do that at home. Uh, just really quickly, um, Cricky looks great. Uh, the, the sculpt is really nice, especially on, on the underside of his belly. It's nice to see that they did not skimp on the details. And of course, the little roof on the cage is also very nice as well. This uh, might be one of my favorites, and I know I've said that a lot about some of the other ones, but this is definitely one of my favorites of this entire group here. Next, we have Huey, Dewey, and Louie playing in what appears to be a musical trio, and for some reason, Dewey is wearing orange. But um, I got this thinking that I didn't already have one, uh, an ornament, of the triplets. It turns out that I already do when they're in a sleigh, but this is really nice as well. And um, I have duplicates on the trees, so hey, you know, you can you can never have too many versions of the same character. And they look great. They look really cute. Uh, no difference than usual. And uh, I'm kind of surprised that there isn't any DuckTales merchandise now that the show is out and it's been renewed for another season. I'm, I'm kind of wondering, where's all the Scrooge McDuck stuff? You know? I just, that that kind of befuddles me. Anyway, this one caught me by surprise. On the topic of Lady and the Tramp, the first thing that I saw when it came to the ornament tree was this adorable one of Lady when she was first received as a puppy. It is adorable. I don't think I have any ornaments of Lady and the Tramp so far, so this is my first one. And I couldn't think of a better first one. This is probably going right at the bottom of the tree next to the Aristocats' uh, kittens when they're all in the basket together. This is just this is so cute! The little tongue is just so happy! <laughs> I am so delighted that the Incredibles are slowly making their way back into the Disney store, especially when you consider the fact that the Incredibles 2 was due out soon. And it seems only fitting that I picked up one of the most awesome, incredible ornaments I have ever seen. It is probably one of the most clever and one of the best uses of the whole snow globe look. Uh, it is of Violet and Dash, and they look really great. I love their stances and the paint jobs on the face. It's really nice to know that the details were not skinted upon on this particular ornament. And I love the way that Violet's hair was flowing in this little freeze frame. And obviously the globe is supposed to represent Violet's force field. And I think that's really clever. And like I said, it's probably one of my favorite uses of the whole snow globe bubble look. Except when it comes to this next one here, which is of Jiminy Cricket in an actual underwater bubble. And as you can see, there's a tiny 
teeny little leak in the bubble here, so Jiminy is trying to frantically get the leak out and, whoa, hold it there. And you can see he's looking a little, a little concerned. And the, the seaweed looks amazing. I love the way that, that, that it flows and the, 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 the sea stars and the flowers and everything on the bases. Honestly, the, the details on these things never cease to blow me away, but honestly, I really think that Disney has outdone themselves this year. My hat's off to whoever uh, finally thought of this idea, because heaven knows I've imagined this moment as an ornament many times, so um, thank you for making it a reality. But of course, globes aren't exactly the only way to incorporate fiberglass into these ornaments. Here we have the classic enchanted rose from Beauty and the Beast, underneath the bell dome. And uh, right away you'll probably notice there's a very sparkly ground here with a fallen petal and there's a little switch that if you just turn that on, voila, the rose shall bloom until your 21st year. Although I may have sadly passed that peak, but um, I really love the way that this looks. I always love getting the, the signature objects from certain films. In, uh, in ornament form. But, and the petal design on the golden base here I think is a nice little nod to the uh, Baroque influence on the furniture in the Beast's Castle. And as I always say, if it's not Baroque, don't fix it. <laughs> uh, uh, let me see, what was I? Ah, yes. Um, speaking of gold and signature objects, we have a magic lamp from Aladdin. And it's pretty simple, very straightforward. I'm pretty sure that this has been released before, but I really love the finish on this. I love the way it gleams and glows. And speaking of gleaming and glowing, we move on to Tangled, in which, well, Tangled Ever After, more specifically, and we have that moment in uh, the short where Pascal is hanging on for dear life onto the lantern, and Maximus just happens to fly right past him, wearing a dress. And uh, what I love about this one is that it does light up. There we go. And, ooh, it's a little it's rather bright. <laughs> and uh, I've always wanted a Tangled Lantern to be on my tree, and hopefully this will give me a pretty good idea as to how to accomplish that, um, because I'm not about to have real candles on the tree, uh, sadly. No. While we're still on the signature object theme. Here is the Poison Apple from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. This one is also made of a much lighter material and hopefully won't break as easily. And speaking of breaking, I think I've broken a record as to how many times I've said that. The best comparison that I can probably give to the poison dripping look is the uh, Poison Apple mug that we have seen several times for the past few Halloween seasons. Wow, you know, hey, Nothing says Merry Christmas like a magic wishing apple. Rounding up our objects is the doorknob from Alice in Wonderland. Maybe it's just me, but the whole double-sided face thing kind of reminds me of in and out from Disney's Villain's Revenge, which you can see a playlist for over in that corner somewhere over there. And I like that he has the two different uh, faces, the one more concerned one, and then the more jolly one with the one good turn deserves another. <laughs> but this looks great, and I'm actually kind of hoping I can replicate these uh, these faces for, the, for my actual doorknob in my room, because that would be the perfect touch, if you ask me. These next few are gifts, so if you know who they're for, shh. First up, and most accurately, seeing how I'm filming this on the 20th anniversary of the Enchanted Christmas, we have Belle in her winter attire. And as long as there's Christmas, you know. Uh, just really quickly, the, the brocade and the sparkles on her dress, really lovely details. I love the rose motif that they've got going on here, and I really hope that the people that I have this in mind for like it, because if they don't, um, I have no problem in keeping it. Next up we have Tiana, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's been a while since we've seen any ornaments of the Princess and the Frog, so it's nice to see some representation going on here, even if it is filed in with the rest of the Disney Princess merchandise, that's okay. But I love the little leaf shot that she's got here, and uh, the leaf and lily pad designs that they've got going on at the bottom of her dress look really nice, and I'm always so very pleased to see 
what these artists and designers can come up with when creating the winter wear for these princesses. It, it's really nice to see, and uh, as a uh, amateur designer myself, I, uh, I really like what they come up with. Finally, we come to my favorite newest Disney princess, Moana. And I know that I got the How Far I'll Go one for Christmas last year, but honestly, I was just so taken by the amount of detail that went into this. I mean, everything from her hair, to the dress, to her skirt, her outfit, the necklace, to her shell, everything looks fantastic. And I just, I couldn't resist, and I am really looking forward to the Hawaiian dub of the film. I honestly can't wait to see that, especially seeing how they got Ali'i back for uh, Moana's voice. Uh, that, to me, is something extra special. To close out with all these ornaments, we come to the Vintage Toy Collection series. We start off with Mickey and Minnie with very springy appendages here. And uh, these are based off of vintage toys, as the name would probably imply. And you've got some springy tails here, and, so, and the legs and the arms and everything. And they look really great. I love the sparkly detail that they put onto this. Uh, they look adorable with their, with their uh, couple skating. That's really something that I ought to try and do one of these days. And then we have Goofy hugging his Christmas tree. A rather... Uh, Mm, a rather odd-looking Christmas tree, and uh, again, with very springy appendages, although, ooh, it would appear I got one where his tail was broken off. Huh, I don't know how that slipped by me. But the rest of them looks really great, and the tree itself is a bell. It's a pixie bell. But sadly, these are made of, of the heavier and obviously breakable material. But nevertheless, they look really great. I'm, ha I'm happy to have more uh, Mickey Mouse presents on my tree. These are my two favorites of the vintage series. There's the Jack in the Box, or I guess Donald in the Box. Uh, don't turn the crank because a lot of those were broken in the store, but the uh, spring here was uh, very well utilized, and Donald looks really cute, and also the Pluto rocking horse, rocking dog, rocking Pluto. Anyway, um, this is really great. I love the way that it does actually teeter-totter back and forth, and you've got the spring in the tail, and the really cute look on Pluto's face there. And again, more sparkles. I'm getting more sparkles all over me and all, all over my desk, so that means my tree is going to be extra sparkly this year. There is just one problem. With all these new ornaments that I keep getting, I might just have to get another tree. And last but certainly not least, I make it my goal, nay, a tradition to buy the Disney Store ornament with the year imprinted on the back. And this year we have Winnie the Pooh and Piglet exchanging scarves in this lovely winter setting. It's nice to see that they're in starting to branch out to characters outside of Mickey and Friends to include in these uh, in the annual ones. So um, I'm very, very happy to see some love for Winnie the Pooh and Friends, uh, especially seeing how I didn't see any other ornaments of them this year, so that is really nice. Well, that just about does it for this haul. Oh boy, let me tell you, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. I don't know why I didn't make a haul video when I came back from Disneyland, seeing how that haul was considerably smaller, but then again, considering how much I tend to ramble and how long this video is no doubt going to be, it's probably best that I didn't. But hey, what did you think? Did you see anything here that you would like to add to your holiday wish list? Let me know in the comments down below, and tell me if you think that uh, I might have missed something in store or online that you've seen that you think that I might enjoy. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then please be sure to give it a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, keep a weather eye on the horizon for more sights, sounds, and surprises from yours truly. And be sure to hit that notification button so that you don't miss any videos when they go up. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I am Zoro Gatone, the other apprentice, and I'll be seeing you real soon. Bye!